In today's video, we are going to look at a case study of a 60-year-old female interested in a whole life insurance policy set up for maximum cash value, but it'll be interesting today. We're going to look at three different products, two different products, but three different scenarios that have a couple minor differences but it really influenced the individual's decision when they selected the final policy. So let's get on into it and have some fun. If you like details and having full awareness on different options that are available with whole life insurance products, you may like this video a lot. So to begin, just with the basic details, we've got a 60 year old female. She was approved recently at Preferred Plus, which is the top health rating. And she's going with a total death benefit of $1 million. So when I say total death benefit, what I mean there is when we look at the design, we have a whole life death benefit of $100,000 and then a term rider, specifically a one-year term rider of $900,000. The company selection is Guardian and this particular design with Guardian, that $1 million death benefit and then 10% of that being the whole life insurance death benefit is as aggressive as we can go with respect to the design. So why that's important is typically when we work with individuals, one is stating, here's how much money I'd like to add to a policy on a yearly basis. Or here's how much money I'd like to have the ability to add to a policy on any given year. In a case like this, it's a little bit different. Initially, that was the, the approach. This individual said, here's how much money I want to add. But after the approval was received, the base premium was forced to be a little bit higher than what he was comfortable with. Let me explain that piece. So we've got this total death benefit at $1 million. The whole life death benefit is $100,000. Let's look at the illustration here, one of the illustrations. Here's what we got. So we've got a 50-year-old, I'm sorry, a 60-year-old female. Health rating preferred plus. I want to start there. So the company selection is good old Guardian, one of the major mutual companies. If you have a preferred rating or a preferred plus rating, which is the top health category, the minimum whole life death benefit can often be $100,000. A little bit more information. If you have a preferred plus rating and you do not have a one year term rider attached, let's say you're not going with a term rider at all, then the minimum whole life death benefit would be $250,000. Why that's important to note is when we look at this particular case, because of her health rating, the lowest we could drive the whole life death benefit to was $100,000. And the husband, who I primarily have been working with, is interested in minimizing the base premium as much as possible in order to juice that cash value. That's what he's interested in. So what we did here was back into the minimum premium by solving for a $100,000 whole life death benefit. And that gives him a base premium of $4,110. And this is for his wife, age 60. So that's the base premium in this particular product. And we backed into it instead of saying, let's solve for a $4,100 base premium. We said, how low is the premium based on this $1 million total death benefit? And the answer is 4110. So we've got $100,000 in whole life insurance. And then we've got this guy, this target additional benefit. What this is, is a term insurance rider. What this is, if you're interested in cash value, is a way to add more life insurance to your policy at a low cost. How I like to explain it is that it is a cheap way to raise the MEC limit or a cost-effective way if you don't like the word cheap. So what we've got is a $1 million death benefit. And with an L95 product, the MEC limit, which we're going to hit on in a little bit, we'll provide more details on in a little bit, is $78,000, slightly higher than that. So based on that $1 million death benefit, I can add up to $78,000 per year per the IRS standards. There are insurance company limits I need to be aware of though. But with this type of setup, as you add money to a whole life insurance policy, what happens? Particularly when you add PUAs to a policy. What happens to your policy? The cash value goes up. That's what everyone is interested in. 
But what else happens? When you add funds into the PUA rider, your whole life death benefit goes up. And you can actually see it on the illustration. So this column right here, cash value of all ads, this represents money you add into PUAs and also dividends that are added to the policy. So cash value of all ads, how I like to think of it, is money I add to cash value. Since adding money to my PUA rider immediately adds to my cash value, I'll see an immediate impact there. So this column represents the cash value buildup from PUA payments and dividends. It does not include any cash value buildup from base premium payments. Because the base premium, while it does not build cash value in the first year, it does build cash value as time passes. But to be very clear with this column, this is the cash value buildup primarily from PUA payments and then dividends that are being applied to the policy as well. So why I mention that is because the column immediately to the right of it, total face amount of ads represents what? Face amount of whole life death benefit that is purchased from your PUA payments. So think of it this way. When you add money to cash value through PUA payments, yes, it shows up in cash value, but then also it buys you more whole life death benefit. Want to see something cool? Take 100,000, add 133,270 to it. Have that figure? So what do you have? 233. 270. Now take a million, which is the total death benefit we have on the far right, the net death benefit, and subtract the 233, 270 from it. What do you get? Well, you don't need a calculator, and here's why. Let's circle this in green. This column right here, face amount of one year term. There's the dollar amount, 766 and change. So what happens here? is as you add funds to your PUA rider, your whole life death benefit goes up, and by the amount the whole life death benefit goes up, guess what happens to the term rider? It goes down. That's why my death benefit remains constant at one million while I am funding the policy. We'll explain why it drops a little bit down there at year 11, that's optional, um, but we'll explain that a little bit later. But that's what we've got going on here with that term rider. Quick side note, the cost there will also decrease in cases like this. So main point to that, because that's a lot of detail I just went through there, is as your whole life death benefit goes up, your term rider comes down. So back to this guy. What do we have? Whole life death benefit, 100,000. Term rider. 900,000. We know as this policy is funded, the whole life death benefit will increase, the term will come down. Products we looked at here. So we've got an L95 with a 5% PUA fee, an L95 with a 10% PUA fee. These two are the exact same product. We're just using a different PUA rider that is available. That's a 5% PUA fee and a 10% PUA fee that different PUA rider is only available with the L95 product. All other Guardian products have one PUA rider available, which is the 10% PUA fee. So you'll see this product, the 15 pay whole life product, was also considered that has a 10% PUA fee. What we looked at are the dividend values and also the guaranteed values. The dividend values is really what he's interested in because we've got one of the four major mutual companies and we have seen them deliver, which is fantastic. As my wife and I would say that our dog says that when he has a good meal. We like to have fun with our golden retriever. <laughs> All right, anyway, here we go. So dividend values are good to look at, but the guarantees are beneficial to look at. And especially when you start looking at lower rider fees, you're going to see stronger guarantees as a result, which is important to a lot of people. And the husband, extremely analytical, so he wanted to see all of that up front and then crunched his own internal rate of return as he looked at all of the numbers. So let's continue on here with some questions that came up. And we sort of hit on this with the, the illustration, but we're going to go into more detail. What's the minimum? So what he wants to do is take out a $1 million death benefit for his wife 
He's told, here's the minimum whole life death benefit if you proceed with the preferred rating, $100,000. Okay, so what that means is the premium is going to be determined by two things. The whole life death benefit, which we saw on the illustration we had, it was a little over $4,100. And the second thing will be the product. So we looked at the L95 product. We haven't looked at the 15 pay policy yet. When you look at those two products, what do they mean? L95 compared to 15 pay. Well, an L95 means that premiums are payable up until age 95. Whereas a 15 pay product means that premiums are payable for 15 years, specifically the base premium. What you will typically see with a whole life insurance policy is that the longer the premium is payable, the longer it's due, the lower it will be for the same amount of whole life death benefit. Example, L95 policy. She's 60 years old, can pay into it for about 35 years. So for $100,000 of whole life insurance, the base premium is what? Do you remember what it was? $4,100 and change. So a 15 pay policy, instead of being able to fund it for 35 years up until age 95, I can only pay into it for 15 years. So with a 15 pay product, if I'm going to purchase that same $100,000 whole life death benefit, what will a base premium be? Well, the nice thing about illustration software and life insurance illustrations is we can generate it in about two seconds and here you go. So here's the 15 pay policy. Preferred plus rating, there you go. Close to $5,500. So the base premium is higher. Now on the flip side, with limited pay products, you will see a little, little bit of that base premium show up in cash value. So there is some benefit to that. So we are going to look at a side-by-side -side comparison as we progress through this. But here we're solving for the minimum premium based on that $100,000 whole life death benefit. This is much different from a lot, of, a lot of people we work with that say, here's the specific dollar amount I wanna pay in. So the minimum, for his particular case, will either be $4,100 and change or just under $5,500 with respect to the base premium. He does have to cover the term rider cost on top of that. What's the maximum? Well, the answer to that question is two answers. One, you've got the insurance company maximum limits, and then two, you have the MEC limits. What's the insurance company limits? Well, Guardian as a company will allow policyholders to do the following. When you have a one-year term rider attached, which we do in this example, whatever that base premium is, the first year, they'll allow us to illustrate 50 times the base premium. And that's regardless if I, if I have a one-year term rider attached or not. But beginning the second year, if you've got a one-year term rider attached, the maximum we can illustrate is whatever the base premium is times 10. That's how much you can pay into PUAs. If you do not have this one-year term rider attached, beginning the second year, the maximum PUA payment you can make is 3x the base premium. That's through the 10th year, and then it drops to 1x in many cases. But again, if you've got a one-year term rider attached, you can go 10x, which really opens those limits up. That's how you maximize the cash value. So that's the insurance company limits, and this is specific to Guardian with their PUA limits. What's the other limit we had? The MEC limit. What determines the MEC limit on a life insurance policy? If you've seen any of our policy design videos, it's an individual's age and total death benefit on a policy. There are other items that impact that MEC limit, such as the guaranteed rate on a whole life insurance product. Fortunately, for the products he has been interested in, the 15 pay and, L and L95, they both have a 3% guaranteed rate, which means the net death benefit of $1 million will give us the same MEC limit with both of those products, $78,000. So what does that mean from a illustration standpoint? If you have a base premium of $4,100 and change. How much could you pay in the first year based on Guardian's limits alone, not the IRS limits, not the MEC limit? Well, you can go 50X that. But what's the MEC limit? 
$78,000. So if we take a look at this, here's what we can do. Take your 4110, multiply it by 50. There's the PUA payment you can make in the first year, but will that trigger a mech? Yes, it will. So we can't do that if he doesn't want a mech, which he does not. So we know in the first year, because Guardian will allow us to go up to 50X, we can pay $78,000. That's why we have it in the illustration, because they will accept it, no problem, perfect. However, beginning the second year, what's the maximum payment? Well, the maximum payment we can illustrate is the base times 11, because we can pay another 10X in PUAs, that's on top of the base premium, 45 to 10. So what you'll see is 45. I like round numbers, but in some cases we do show the max, depends on the individual, <laughs> but I do like round numbers. It makes things easy. This stuff is comp complicated enough as it is, isn't it? All right, so here we go. We've got the mech limit, 78K. Let's continue on. So we hit on this a little bit. The common approach is often, I want to fund X amount of dollars for X, X number of years. He is leaning toward funding a policy for 10 years at a maximum dollar amount. He might want to continue to fund the policy for his wife with just the base premium thereafter, but in analyzing the policy for himself, we showed him our analysis as well, but he wanted to do his own. He saw in order to maximize the internal rate of return, funding for a shorter period of time did do that. So he was attracted to that option. So we do know the number of years, at least what he's leaning toward, 10 years, and the amount he wanted to fund, well that initially ranged between $20,000 and $50,000 per year. However, he did mention, I've got a lump sum of money, I'm comfortable adding that to the policy. What I want to do is make sure this policy is maximized. So here, I've got a $100,000 whole life death benefit, I know that the base premium will be $4,100 and change or $5,400 and change. So instead of saying, I want to fund this much, here's the approach I'd like to take, Steve. I want to maximize the performance based on the limits, based on the rules of the game that I have to play in here from Gar the rules that Guardian has and then also that the IRS has. I just wanna know the rules and be able to maximize the policy which I love, by the way. That's one of my favorite things to do with life insurance. So what do we got up here? Mech limit based on that total death benefit of $1 million is what? $78,000. It's a little bit more than that. Whole life death benefit, $100,000. Base premium is what? With the L95, let's do this. It's $4,100, I'm just gonna round it down here. And what was it with the 15 pay? I'm gonna round down again, call it $5,400. So that's as low as we could drive the base premium, which is true minimum commitments with the term rider in those cases. Might be right around 5,000 and then 6,000 or 6,500. So we can commit to the minimum and add more PUAs at his discretion. Remember, Guardian is extremely flexible when it comes to their PUA rider. Well, what's that mean? Well, everything else, he can just plow into the PUA rider. So what do we look at? What would you want to see in this particular case? Could be a couple things you wanna see. Here's what we looked at. I'm just trying to put myself in his position Here's what I, I would want to see if we flipped positions. First year, he wants to max fund it. We know, based on the limits, we can go up to $78,000, no problem. That's right up to the MEC limit. Guardian will accept it as well, and it will maximize performance. Fantastic. How about beginning the second year? Well, what we looked at, First was an L95 product, and maxing that out at 45K per year, which is the maximum we could illustrate, was a little bit more if we go back to the 4110 times, times 11, but right around that, he was very interested in that. He said, okay, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. I, I think I can do it. 
That's the second through 10th year. That's with the L95. What about the 15 pay? Well, here's what I wanted to look at. One, I wanted to look at the exact same thing. Because first, I want an apples to apples comparison from a funding perspective. So, what I mean when I say that is I want the same cash flow going in, comparing the L95, both 10% and 5% PWA fees, with the 15 pay product. The thing is, it's not a fair comparison. And the reason why is because I have a little bit higher base premium here. Remember what it is? 5,400. Or here, I've got a base of 4,100. With all things equal, 3% guaranteed rate and such, from a design standpoint, with the whole life death benefit and term rider, all things equal, that's gonna be more attractive because the base premium is lower, reducing the expenses, and you'll see it when we look at the comparison, both on a non-guaranteed and guaranteed basis. But what do you get if you go with that option? Should I just show 45,000 per year? Or can I show more than that? Can I show closer to 60,000 or $59,000 per year? Yes, because what I can do now, what do we see here? Exact same policy, same base premium, same death benefit, but 59K per year. How did we come up with that number? Well, how we came up with that number, take the base times 11. The base times another 10 in PUAs, 59 and change. Almost 60, but if I try and plug in $60,000 per year, beginning year two, it won't let me. You see that number show up on the screen, the 59,919. So we just used a round number of $59,000. So if you can follow me here, the second option with the 15 pay, knowing that I could approach it, funding 59K per year beginning the second year. He saw that and said, eh, probably not. So with all things equal, I'm gonna to gravitate toward the L95. Now one question he did ask was, is there a chance that I could go with the L95 and fund 59K per year, even though you can't illustrate it, Steve? Or if you could fund up to 78K per year, beginning the second, the second year, even though you can't illustrate it, Steve? And the answer is yes. Well, I should say maybe. That is something that we've seen Guardian allow consistently, exceeding those 10x limits. However, from my conversations with them, they have stated that what we allow to be illustrated is really what we're comfortable with. So there could be a situation where we come back and say, no, we're gonna stick to what we're comfortable enforcing with respect to our, our illustration software. So that is something we always explain to individuals up front, just so we've got full awareness knowing, hey, if we go above that, yes, we've seen them accept that in the past, but they might say no. This way we don't have a surprise saying, hey, why did they not accept my money? <laughs> so anyway, I definitely wanted to mention that piece. So it's possible, but we want to have the awareness. They might say no. You want to look at some numbers here, a comparison. So we looked at the illustrations. Well, what we looked at, here's the 15 pay. Originally, we looked at that Guardian L95 with a 10% PUA fee. How you can tell is because in the PUA rider section, we don't see any percentage. If you don't see any percentage or any additional terminology, specifically STP, that means it's the 10% PUA fee. And how you can also tell, so you go to page two on the illustration. Here it is on page two, paid up additions rider. Couldn't find it for a second. A 10% charge will be deducted from each payment. It's not a full 10%, meaning if I pay $1,000, I won't see $100 just sliced right off the top. Doesn't quite work like that. We've got videos that provide a full breakdown on the PUA fee, um, but I do like to mention that piece. So let's look at the 5% um, Guardian PUA fee, just so you can see that. And you'll notice it's the exact same thing. Same product, same premium, same design. The only difference is the paid up additions rider is STP, which represents short-term performance. More cash value up front, weaker long-term performance based on the non-guarantees. The guarantees, I'm gonna go through that too, which are in the illustration. 
I need to run a supplemental numeric report, but that's okay, I don't have it here. But we do run those in the illustration. In this example, we have it on Excel. So let's take a look here at a side-by-side -side comparison. First is really what he's interested in. On the left, 15 pay. First year, 78K, then 45K per year through the 10th year which is stretching the limits of the L95 product is really what we're doing. So there's the 4110 and 45K per year, years two through 10. 78,000 in the first year, ah uh, yes. Why that death benefit drops in year 11 because we illustrated a reduced paid up option which eliminates the premium, cuts the term rider, that's why we see a drop here. We did that in all three of them, which you'll see on the illustration too if we go back to it. But over to the right, Exact same product, the L95 policy, but with a 5% PUA fee. What do you notice here? First year cash value, what do you notice? You paid in 78 grand, there's a difference there. 71.5 compared to 67.8, how about the 15 pay? That's in last place, and it's going to be in last place. The reason why, because that base premium's higher. If my cash flow is the same, but I've got a higher base premium, with a product that's got the same guaranteed rate, I'm not cheating and showing a non-guaranteed uh, illustration with a low guaranteed rate because that'll actually make the numbers look different. If it's a true apples to apples comparison, I'm going to see a case like this where there's not much of a difference. But when I look at it long term, does the 15 pay catch up? We're pushing 80 years old there and the answer is no, it does not. However, how about the far right? Well, that's not quite as strong, is it? No, short-term performance. You'll see this stronger for about 12 years. By the 13th year, we see that 10% PUA fee shine when we look at the comparison. Again, not a huge difference here. What he selected was this option. And a big reason why, because again, this policy is for his wife, he selected the higher PUA fee, even after seeing the guarantees, which I'm gonna show you next, um, but why he did that is because he's got another policy which he has been aggressively funding uh, with another major mutual company that has richer upfront cash value. So looking at them both, it's easier to make a decision to say, okay, this one's perfectly fine. I'm fine taking a little bit less guaranteed for a little bit stronger non-guaranteed potential. He was, he was comfortable with that. That's a personal decision though. Everyone is different there. Some people like more upfront, it's always up to you. But uh, I do like to show the options and let the individual decide. So here's the guarantees, same thing. What do you notice here though? Here's where it gets fun. What's highlighted in yellow represents the break-even point. Remember what the break-even point was in the non-guarantees? Between years three and four with that 5% PUA fee. Year five with a 10% and between five and six with the 15 pay. With the guarantees, <laughs> it's a different story. And a big reason why, one, we have no dividends that are ever being paid to the policy, but number two, the term rider, which we don't have on here, but we could, we could go back to the illustration to show this. When you run an illustration based on the guarantees, the term rider is going to assume that the maximum charges are being assessed meaning more of my payment is satisfying that term rider cost instead of being paid into PUAs. So that's why the guaranteed values really give a nice depiction of the worst, worst case scenario, which is nice to see. Here we go. Between 12 and 13. With the 10% PUA fee, year 12. Look at this. The 5% PUA fee, year nine. With the guarantees, it's a level playing field. The justification behind a higher PUA fee is that the insurance company is going to take more money up front, and then they'll be able to put that money to work. And then if they're able to do what they think they can do with it, they'll be able to give you a higher non-guaranteed dividend payment. But it is non-guaranteed. So to simplify, if I go with a higher PUA fee, I'm going to give you, the insurance company, more money up front, and you tell me you're going to give me more, you're going to potentially give me more long term. So that's why on the non guaranteed side, that one will look better, both of those with the higher PUA fee. On the guaranteed side, 
you take that potential of a greater dividend out of the equation and you've got the flat 3% guaranteed rate across the board and it is what it is. So now what happens is because I've got the same guaranteed rate but a lower PUA fee, now I'm going to have more money long term. Very interesting stuff, right? Fascinating. <laughs> it is really fun. I, I do enjoy this a lot because we can really see just how to maximize these cash values, which all progresses into step two, which is looking at loans. And then also when you look at a policy long term, the policy that has the greatest cash value long term will have the greatest death benefit long term because you'll notice when I hit age 100 with most whole life insurance policies, my cash value and death benefit are equal. So if I've beefed up the long-term cash value to the highest level possible, I'm going to have the highest death benefit. But here, based on the guarantees, well, you'll see that. And you can tell too, just by looking at year 11, when the death benefit doesn't increase because there's no dividends here, 784. Look at, look at your cash value at age 100 hits 784, 99 actually. You'll notice in each of these examples, the cash value matches the death benefit at age 100 or, or one year earlier. But this allowed him to see the different options side by side. He sees the difference in guaranteed cash value, sees the difference in non-guaranteed cash value, takes into consideration that he already has a whole life insurance policy, really crunches the numbers and says, this is what I'm most comfortable with. Goes with that option. We did look at a 15 pay analysis as well, which was pretty cool, which just showed the 15 pay policy at the 45 compared to one where he maxed it out each year. Here's one thing I highlighted too, because the question comes up here, hey, what's going on with these wacky payments? And you'll see the same thing with the guarantees. And here's what's going on. <laughs> 15 pay policy. Years nine and 10, what happened? Funding's no longer $59,000. And I did plug in $59,000 per year in the, in the illustration software, but it didn't pop up. Why is that? Well, look at this. Remember that one year term rider and how it works? How much can we illustrate when it's attached? 10X, the base premium PUAs. Why we have this $45,000 and change figure in year nine is because we have some term that was left, but it's burnt out. In year 10, take this dollar amount. Why don't let's do it on a calculator actually. 5447, multiply that by the maximum amount you can add to PUAs without a one year term rider, 16341. Add it to your base premium. Check that out. That matches that. So what we're limited to there, even though we plugged in $59,000, is the maximum payment one can pay in without a one-year term rider through the 10th year. Fascinating stuff. <laughs> Point to all of that, and let me go back to the Excel workbook first. Point to all of that was to demonstrate that rider, but really, if he wanted to really push the envelope with his policy, but again, he looked at it and said, no, like I'm really comfortable with this option. I am comfortable with the minimum. I know I can hit this in the first year, and that's something I, I would like to stretch toward in addition to my current policy. I mean, his current policy that he has, he funds a little bit more than this. It's about 50K per year. So aside from the first year lump sum, I mean, he's looking at very close to 100 grand per year that he's interested or that he is looking to fund his whole life insurance policies with. Cash value is a goal. Death benefit is also very valuable to him where he is at in his life for him and his wife. Uh, but it's, it's an interesting case. A lot of details, which frankly is something I really enjoy going through. These details are important and I would always ask about these questions. I would spend more time than I probably should have trying to understand it, but then being able to understand it and then communicate it to someone who's interested in the product has really helped our business over the years. I mean, that's, that's what we like to do. We specialize in whole life insurance products designed for maximum cash value. And when someone really wants to go 
really deep and understand what is and is not possible, the different riders, like that's, that's an area we thrive. Um, at least I like to think so. We can always work on it. Um, I want to make sure we're not haughty in that respect. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I do hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button, subscribe for more. Uh, let us know. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And as always, I hope this helps. Thanks so much. Hey guys, Steve Parisi here. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you'd like more information or to see some custom policies for yourself, feel free to call or email our offices at the contact information below.